Well, for those of you who haven't, who haven't got to meet yet, this is Dr. Gunther Kress. He traveled from London to be with us today and yesterday as well. And currently he's writing on multimodality and is going to continue research and he's going to be working in a surgical center recently coming up in his research, which we found really interesting yesterday. Um, we got to find out um, about different aspects of multimodality yesterday and he's going to present today. Would you like me to talk about? And um, um, he wrote back saying, "Well, anything that interests you, and you're in the middle of your own kind of thinking, and uh, people knocking on the door, and an email's got to be answered, and the uh, PhD's got to be read." Um, I put down a title, which, when I looked at it, when I came here, um, just before I came here, I thought, "This is ridiculous." <laughs> <laughs> it has nothing to do with any interest that um, the people that are likely to be there will have. Um, so I've taken the liberty of uh, changing the title a little bit, um, and maybe you won't mind. Um, I suppose what I thought then was, um, Um, the title that um, ought to have appeared um, somewhere near the top of um, this thing would have been writing in the era of visualization. And then underneath, um, something like the title which I had initially proposed and I thought was really a little bit um, too strange for an audience that uh, the general, more general interest uh, was an agenda for a social seminar approach to modern global representation. And that refers really to your introduction about I'm writing a book on multimodality where I want to sort of say what kinds of things we have to think about. Um, so my interest at that time kind of governed and um, what I did, and Frank was too polite to say, um, excuse me, but that really won't work. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, um, I thought I would just um, show what um, I mean by this issue of um, the era of visualization, not that you need to know, I mean, need to be told, because um, everybody knows that visualization is what is going on. Um, a colleague of mine uh, was involved in rewriting the physics degree, for instance, for the um, top level of um, high school in, um, in the UK. And what that involved was basically um, a massive visualization um, of, of what had been a partly written and partly uh, visual. Um, curriculum before. Um, in the world generally there are big projects um, around um, around visualization of all sorts of things. Um, but I thought I'd just um, show um, what this um, looks like. Um, and here is um, a copy of the Times. And because we're a small group and informal, I'll ask you, um, without reading too closely in the paper there, when do you think that might have been? This is 1959, um, and I happen to be giving a talk in, um, in um, 1999, and I thought I would just look at what that um, papers had looked like. It was on newspaper, but I looked at what papers had looked like 50 years earlier, and this was the Times 50 years earlier. Um, so it's not all that um, uh, recent, um, that, um, not that there weren't images. That writing was absolutely dominant in terms of presentation. So, is this 49 or 50? 59. 59. So, this is 59. And 50 years on, uh, the paper looked like that. Not massively visual, but um, I mean, this would have been inconceivable. Um, and not only visual, but it has color too, uh, which is an important aspect of black and white. The color, because black and white tends to mean being serious. 
and how that's consuming every chunk. Um, so um, just to kind of show um, how that works. Um, and I suppose I thought, um, you know, the place of writing here, it's still kind of dominant, but it's um, with something else. And uh, the framing, um, the framing of the paper has changed from um, this framing here, where you needed to read the paper with a, one of these glasses, sort of Sherlock mm Holmes -hmm. style, and it was work. It was serious work over a long period of time, serious engagement and um, sustained. Um, whereas here, even the Times, this is uh, you know, one of the serious papers in England, um, has changed. And then I thought um, I'll just show you um, bits of writing from um, a little bit earlier um, and begin to think about. Um, what the history of writing um, maybe uh, in England looks like. So this is a, a religious pamphlet from um, the early part of the 17th century, about 16, uh, does it say here? Um, 1653. Um, so the middle of the 17th century, a woman called um, Anna Shrapnel. Um, she's a working class woman um, who um, uh, writes a, a, a religious pamphlet. Um, and, um, here is um, the introduction to the pamphlet. She says, um, I am Anna Trapnell, the daughter of William Trapnell, shipwright, who lived in Poplar in Stepney Parish. My father and mother living and dying in the possession of the Lord, in the profession of the Lord Jesus. Her mother died nine years ago. The last words she uttered upon the deathbed were, these to her Lord, uh, for her daughter. Lord, double thy spirit upon my child. These words she uttered with much um, eagerness uh, three times and spoke no more. I was trained up to my book and writing. I have walked in fellowship with the church meeting of the Hallows, where I visited John Simpson as a member for the space of about four years. I'm well known to him in that whole society. Also to Mr. Greenville, preacher at Stepney, and most of that society, to Mr. Henry Jesse, most of his society, to Mr. Venning, preacher at um, Olives and um, Suffolk, and most of his society, to Ms. Penelis, and most of his society, to have knowledge of me and of my conversation. If any desire to be satisfied of, it, or satisfied of it, they can give testimony of me and of my walking in times past. I mean, if you look at this um, from maybe two perspectives, um, if you look at um, what, um, what Anna Trapnell, the sentence is, um, you'll see it's a very different conception um, of the sentence than we have now. Yeah. It's sort of um, a kind of a stringing together um, of um, little chunks, which most of which we would now regard as sort of sentences in their own right. Um, so you have to ask, um, what is the, the meaning of a sentence at that time, and what is the meaning of a sentence now? Like, what kind of framing um, is she putting around the sentence? The sentence is smaller than a paragraph, but it's much, much larger than anything we would have to know. The sentence, in other words, is very close to a spoken um, um, or oratorical performance, um, an oratory, an orator's performance. Um, but the other perspective um, that I would um, um, look at with is to say, what kinds of um, languages speak there? What kinds of voices appear in that um, in that first paragraph? Um, I am Anna Trapnell, or William Trapnell, who lived in Poplar and Stepney my father and mother living and dying in the uh, profession of the Lord Jesus. And then I think a slight uh, change in tone. My mother died nine years ago. The last words she uttered upon her deathbed were these to the Lord for her daughter. Lord, double thy spirit upon my child. These words she uttered with much eagerness three times and spoke no more. And then a change very much again. I was trained up to my book and writing and I walked in fellowship with, can you, can you see these changes? I mean, it's different sort of, Class dialects, uh, different kind of um, institutional dialects. One is 